Another important part of the document management process in Photoshop is, of course, saving your document. And you have the option to both save and save as, like you do on most programs. And to access that option, you simply click File and choose Save if you want to save over top of the existing file. If you've made changes, it's likely that you'll want to actually choose Save As. And so whenever I choose Save As, it brings up the original file name and the fact that it was a JPEG image. It gives me the option of where to save the document. I could save it in its original folder or choose a new folder to save it into. And then the format. And there's a number of formats that are available in Photoshop, some of which you'll use on a very regular basis. Others you may never use at all. Okay, the most common ones are the native Photoshop format, which is the PSD format. And that's extremely important to use if you're making any kind of changes in Photoshop that include layers and paths and those kinds of things that you may want to go back and edit later. If you're done with your work and you've already saved a Photoshop version of your work, you may want to then select one of the other options depending on what its final use is. If you're going to be using your document for the web, then JPEG or PNG would be the best options for you to use. If you're saving your document for print, whether it's a book cover or perhaps it's graphics for a brochure, you're going to be using it to further create a document using a layout program like Adobe InDesign, then your choice may want to be TIFF, the TIFF file format, which is a PostScript file format that is fully compatible with image setters that you would use for printing commercially. And then finally, I want to highlight the Photoshop PDF format, which is based on the Adobe Acrobat file format. And by using Photoshop PSD, it has some unique features with it being used in Photoshop. For instance, it does have the ability to maintain layers. You can also convert the layers into separate pages within the PDF. Okay, so that is an option for us as well. And as a matter of fact, if we choose that option here, now we only have a single layer, but I can choose to save this as a PDF, and then I click Save. It brings up a warning, which you can turn off, and I'll click OK, and it brings up the standard Adobe PDF presets, high quality, press quality, smallest file size, and so on. And I'm going to go with the default high quality print. If you want to preserve Photoshop editing capabilities, like if we our document had layers and you wanted to maintain that, you would make sure that this checkbox was checked. If you want to optimize it for fast web, which is a default, and usually I'll leave that checked as well, you can do that. If you want to view the PDF after saving it, you would check this box. And what will happen is whenever you click Save PDF, it will launch Adobe Acrobat if you have that installed and give you the opportunity to view the PDF and how it appears. With compression, typically, in most cases, the default settings are what you're always going to use. The same with output. The default usually makes sense. You don't need to embed color models or anything like that. Very often, you can require a password if it's a sensitive document. You would just simply check that and then enter a password here. You can also restrict printing, editing, and so on if you want to do that. And then the summary is basically just the choices that you've made for the setup. Okay, so once you've selected all of these options, you'd simply choose Save PDF. And we'll, we're going to say yes in this particular case. And it tells you that if you preserve Photoshop editing capabilities, it's incompatible with earlier versions of Photoshop. So since we're using the latest version of Photoshop, I'm just going to move forward with yes. And you'll notice here it says uh, saving 10%. So it'll actually tell me how far along it is in the saving process. You can also see that down here uh, at the bottom of the screen where it says saving 10%. And then it's done. And so now our document is actually a PDF and we have the original JPEG version as well. If I wanted to change the document and save it as a PNG, let's just select PNG, and I choose Save, 
it's going to give me separate options. One is re related to compression. If I want no compression and make the document open fast, I would choose that. The default is to choose slow smallest. In other words, to make the PNG file the smallest that it can be. And it takes longer to do that. Okay. Normally with interlace, you would select none. I can click OK. And my PNG version is saved. If I was saving this document for print and I was choosing the TIFF option, click Save. And it gives me several choices here. One for compression. I normally use LZW and none of the others. With pixel order, the default is typically fine. Interleaved. A byte order, it depends on whether you're using a PC or a Mac. I'm on a Mac, so I would choose that. The other options here, you probably will never use. So you just click OK and you're done.